All right, guys, welcome to the Direct Farm Marketing Podcast. And today we've got a very special guest and our co host, Amanda Berkey, the Client Success Manager with Direct Farm Marketing. Amanda, super excited to have you on and get rolling today. How's it going? Yeah, Mike, I'm super excited to be here. Excited to to discuss our first topic together and and uh, and really get going. Yeah. So, um, guys, just so you know, um, as we're kind of kicking the podcast off, I brought on a few different guests to talk about all things farming and marketing that can you guys can relate to your specific operations. And Amanda, if you guys haven't met her already, I just introduced her as our client success manager. She's dealing with a lot of our in-house clients and just helping them navigate the course and the coaching and the different programs that we offer. But we wanted to bring her onto the podcast to talk about you know all things again farming and marketing um, and. And let you guys get an insight and kind of be a fly on the wall for some of our conversations um, that we think can help you in your farm marketing. So that's the goal. That's the purpose of the podcast. And today we're going to talk a little bit, um, one, about finding new customers for your farm and then the importance of building those customers into a customer database. So we talk a lot about this in the course. You guys have heard a lot of my content. I'm hoping that me and Amanda are going to dive into it and share a lot of things. Amanda's got a great background in marketing. Um, she's helped a lot of other people and other niches do just this. So we're, we're looking forward to it. We're going to dive into it. My first question I kind of have for you, Amanda, um, to kind of warm you up and get you introduced here. I know you've done some marketing in the, I don't want to say the construction niche, but um, maybe in the contractor world with a lot of different contractors and done some stuff there. And as I was started thinking about getting ready to start the podcast, you know, um, I kind of was putting contractors and farmers in the same world. And guys, I'm sorry for you guys listening, but when you typically think of farmers and contractors, you don't think of tech savvy crowd. Um, so getting you guys on board of, you know, growing a customer database and putting them into some software, um, can sometimes for us seem like an uphill battle. Um, and so Amanda, kind of first question in dealing with contractors, what's some stuff maybe you work through, look through as far as building a customer database, the importance of that. I'm just kind of looking to get some info from your background there. Yeah, um, Mike, so working with contractors um, has been really similar because uh, in a lot of cases, we're starting from ground zero. You know, we're starting with with really nothing um, because most of them come from a traditional background of, you know, word of mouth, um, which is important. You know, we you will talk on, on that, too, on, on word of mouth um, and having reputation. You know, all of those things are really important. Um, but But now where we've kind of revolutionized to having like a, a digital persona, a digital footprint. Um, and, and, you know, nowadays everyone picks up their phone, you know, when they're looking for something, whether that be, you know, local meets or a contractor, you know, <laughs> you're going to pick up your phone and you're going to look at your phone. That's the first thing that you're going to do now. Um, and so really getting people, um, out there on that digital platform, um, and in multiple different ways. Um, and, and like you said, like, it's really like starting from ground zero, starting from scratch in a lot of yeah, cases. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. Actually today I recorded, I would talk to you about, I recorded a YouTube episode about, um, you know, getting found on Google and I, there's a huge population guys that that is their way of finding people there. If they don't go to the yellow book anymore, they don't necessarily phone a friend, they hop on Google. And so same thing, it's contract. Hey, you know, where's a, you know, flooring specialist near me, or, Hey, where is some grass fed beef near me? That's just, that's their way of navigating what's available. And if you aren't, uh, Amanda mentioned that digital footprint, if you aren't able to be found there, Guys, there's people out there looking for you that aren't finding you in the first place. So that's the, that's what I made the YouTube video on um, was being able to be found if people are already looking. That's free traffic for you guys. So that's a really good one. Um, but that's that's some that's some really good stuff. I think it's really interesting throwing the two groups in a basket there. I'm sorry to do that to you guys listening, but <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and well, it really is. It's so important, to, you know, like going forward, it, there's only going to be more and more people, you know, as our younger generations are growing up, that that's, that's what they've been taught to do, you know? So almost every teenager you see has a phone in their hand as they turn into adults. When they're looking for something, that's what they're going to do. And you need to be making sure that you're found there. And there's so many free resources too, like, like Google My Business Platform. That's what you're talking about. Um, you know, that's like the, one of the first places that, that you want to start is to make sure that you can be found on, on the biggest search platform in, in the world, you know? 
That's right. That's right. It's funny you mentioned, you know, the way the kids are coming up nowadays and their learning behaviors, right? I remember in school, you know, like I remember really, really young in school, them, them teaching. I don't, I don't remember the name. Maybe you can tell me, Amanda. I'm sure you listeners will remember, but the system for categorizing things in the library. And like, that was one of the first things we learned was like how to go into the library and find something. So we were taught, what we were really being taught is a system to research and system to look things up. And these kids nowadays, they're not learning that. They're learning how to look things up on here. So if you aren't able to be found on here, you know, that's the big deal. So I know we're touching on that a bunch, um, you know, but the big thing here, guys, is taking that same example. Um, I'm applying it over to my wife's grandfather. He's a you know, third generation farmer. He's a commercial chicken farmer, but he keeps all of his contacts in you know a little notebook in his in his front pocket, um, and that's that's, that's so his cute. phone card. That's, so yeah, that's that's his Rolodex, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I I mean I got notes all over my desk here. I love writing things down. Um, you can't replace writing something down, but if you guys want to scale your farm business, if you want to grow. Hundred, two, three, four, five thousands of potential customers on your list. You're not going to be able to keep them on a Rolodex. You're not going to be able to keep them in a notebook. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have a tough time reaching out to a thousand people via email, text, phone call, whatever that may be, at one time. So what we want to do is put them into what we call a CRM, and that's a customer relationship management software where we can manage them, we can communicate with them at scale, at bulk, and be able to do that. So that allows us to be able to have our own asset in in our customers, right? So we're creating our own customer, I call it our own customer database, but really, guys, it's it's an asset that you own. uh, And besides your land and all of your farming infrastructure, this is going to be the most valuable asset you have. So building this database is going to be huge for you guys. And we're going to dive into some strategies about building this database. But before I do that, Amanda, do you have, you have any, uh, tips, insights, maybe anything in your background, um, talking about, you know, customer management software uh, or customer relationship management is actually what it's CRM customer relationship management. Um, if you have any tips, insights, uh, I know what we, we, we teach on a certain software inside, um, you know, the, the coaching program, the direct farm roadmap, but you know, you guys might be on other platforms. We want to be able to help you guys out. So I don't know, Amanda, maybe if you have any background insight, anything on that or building that database. Yeah, Mike. Uh, well, when you mentioned Rolodex, like I just had this like flashback to my grandparents' farm, like on their desk, they had this giant Rolodex. I remember playing with it as a kid, you know, flipping through it. I was just so fascinated with that, you know, um, but like going to that, like touching on that, that Rolodex, like the, the power of the CRMs that, that we've seen, like you take that Rolodex and you combine it, you know, if you were to, to try to reach out at that time, it was phone calls. You know, if someone wanted to reach out, you were going to, you're going to make a phone call, um, you know, and more recently emails. So if you're going to go into your Rolodex and you're going to email everyone in your Rolodex, I mean, there's hundreds of contacts in my, my grandparents' Rolodex. So if you were going to sit down and email each one of those contacts, you're going to be sitting there for hours trying to email everybody and trying to, to keep them organized, you know, who you have emailed, who you haven't emailed. So what we see with the power of that CRM is that in literally one click of a button, you can send off an email to everyone in your contact list, whether that's 20 people, 100 people, 500 people, 10,000 people, um, literally in a click of a button, you know, so it, as farmers, ranchers and homesteaders, like we don't have time to be sitting down and spending dozens of hours sending out emails or making phone calls and whatnot. So the power of that CRM um, and having that database um, is just, it's beyond comprehension for a lot of people. Yeah, that's good. That's some really good stuff. Um, That's super powerful. Um, I think you you worded that really well. So I'm going to segment that into kind of the next piece here um, is why emails. Um, We'll touch on this real quick and then we'll, we'll dive into some, you know, strategies of like, you know, really finding customers and building that database to give you guys some actionable steps that you guys can kind of take home and apply to your farm right away. So, you know, Amanda, you said, um, you know, in most, I think what you said was in most recently emails. And when I heard that, kind of light bulb went off in my head. And I thought this the first time I heard about email marketing. It's like, we've been doing email marketing since 1990s, right? You know, late teen, you know, late nineties email marketing. It's like, we're in 2000, we're about to be 24. Right. And it's like email marketing. How can that be still what we're doing? How can that be the forefront of marketing for a farm? And here's the thing, guys, 
Email has proved the test of time, right? We got Facebook, we got Instagram, we got all these new outlets to sell on and they all have their own merits, different things You know, we can dive into later on. But the thing with email marketing that's been proven is that people like to buy things through email. Typically when people are receiving their emails, they're receiving them during working hours. They're you know used to responding to emails in a professional um, setting. And so their mindset when they're receiving an email is of that mindset. They're typically getting work done. They're getting a lot of other promotions. You guys, you know, see those as well. So that's, that's one thing I like to kind of, you know, tell all my farmers or all my clients is that, you know, think about that email that when it hits your inbox, you're kind of excited to read it. Not the ones that like get on your nerves. Um, don't be those people sending emails, be the one that people are excited to see. Right. Um, but the, 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 frame of mind that people are in when they receive an email is different than social media. If, if we contrast the frame of mind that someone's in sitting at their desk or looking at their phone at 8 a.m. at the start of a work day when they're looking at their emails versus that person who's looking at their phone, they're scrolling, right? They're just, you know, they're looking for entertainment. They want to be entertained. No one, and let, I heard this on a podcast the other day. It was related to something else, but I thought it was so good. Let me just ask you listeners a question, Amanda, a question. When was the last time you hopped on your phone to see what the restaurant down the street had, you know, tonight as a special, or you hopped on Instagram to see what the farm was selling as a special box? Nobody does that. We, we, you don't do it. I don't do it. We hop on Instagram to be entertained, right? Um, and so, or to, you know, have something added of value to us, right? I personally like to keep myself honest in using Instagram and Facebook, that if I'm using it, I'm researching things to help you guys with content and that sort of thing. And you guys all have different things you're involved in, different you know vocational capacities and things with your farm. So I challenge you one to use Instagram, you know, as a research tool to help you, you know, improve what you're currently doing. But then also think about that as a way that people are using Instagram if they're not using it. Um, or Facebook, um, or TikTok, even for that matter, they're not using it to find out what special your farm is selling. They're using it um, for entertainment or to add value to them. So that's why email, like I said, it's kind of stood the test of time. Um, we catch people in a little different mindset, and it's a great medium for informing people. And once you build that trust and connection with them via email, um, they know kind of know what to expect, right? They're expecting that email. When they see that you know, email hit their inbox about your whole and half beef deposits, you know, after you were sharing with them, you know, your calving seasons and, you know, some of the hardships or maybe, you know, um, you know, wins you've had through the season. Like there, there's a report there via email that I think is just a little different. Um, so anyway, that, that was a little bit of, I think why email is super important. Uh, Amanda, do you have anything to add on that? I know it's a little winded there. Yeah. Well, and you kind of touched on it too. Like, um, you know, Instagram specifically, but Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all of those, like they're really good at building your brand as far as like, you know, making a connection with people, building that connection, building that trust, um, you know, get, letting them see like a really detailed inside view of your operation. And that's the good stuff and the bad stuff, you know, um, you know, it's been proven that, that people want to see the rough stuff too, you know, not just, not just the lighthearted fun stuff. So, um, those platforms are really powerful when it comes to building connection with your audience and growing, you know, growing that and nurturing that. Um, but ultimately, you know, we want to drive them to become part of that contact list and become part of that, that audience, um, that you can then, you know, utilize the email marketing for, um, and, and then in comes the CRM for that too. So, yeah, no, great. I mean, that's a great summary, right? I mean, we're, we're looking at, you know, taking these new customers, finding a way to connect with them that, you know, is, um, not only trustworthy, but is more accountable than the, you know, the algorithm might be on Facebook and Instagram, um, right. in a way that we can kind of control a little bit, you know, um, I know during COVID, right. You know, all the COVID stuff that happened, people were getting locked out of Facebook and Instagram left and right about posting about the COVID vaccine. Um, and so that you don't, ultimately we don't control that. Right. So your, your own customer database, you, you can control. So, I, you know, we've kind of touched on the value of that. Um, we've touched about email marketing, you know, and why it's, you know, kind of still the winner here in 2023 going into 2024. Uh, let's dive though into a little bit of actually growing our customer database and some strategies to finding new customers for our farms and finding, um, yeah, finding people that want to buy products from us. Because I think as farmers, a lot of times we, you know, want to grow food for everybody. Everyone's hungry. Everyone needs to eat. But at the end of the day, 
um, you know, getting very specific about who's buying our products is only going to help us in the time that we spend marketing, the time we send, you know, writing up these emails and and doing that whole thing there. Um, so, Amanda, if you want to, um, I'm going to kick the ball over in your court here and let you kind of give me some examples or ways that you've seen or are effective to you. Maybe you've used in other industries um, or in your previous background in um you know, outreach of finding new customers for brand, for business, for farm, for a ranch. So, you know, most of my background is actually paid ads, Mike. So that was one of the things that I want to kind of to throw over to you is like kind of the difference of that. So with having your own um, database and your own customer um, database, like you said, you have control over it and you can do a lot of different things with that. Um, one of those things that I've personally done with a database like that is build, um, a lookalike audience with paid ads. And I know we're, we're kind of going in the opposite direction. Um, and there's, there's a use for paid ads and you and I have both seen how powerful those can be. Um, but I wanted to kind of, um, explain the differences, um, between the audiences that you can reach through paid ads and, the database, because I know that you have a background in your personal farm on reaching out and, and collecting from, from, or building your audience from specific groups. Um, the whole yeah, so right. ones was the one that I wanted yeah. to talk about with you yeah. um, and building that, that um, audience. And like I said, you can do a lot with like a lookalike audience um, with yeah. paid ads and reaching and growing an audience, but you really have to start with that core audience. So real quick, Amanda, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to let's let's dive into the paid ads and and we'll go into some organic you know or free strategies, guys. But real quick, you you said the look like audience. Can you define that? Give me a little more background for people who maybe that don't know what that is. Yeah. So so like I said, is like you know starting with that that really um, dialed in and targeted audience. Like who who is the the one person? Like if you were to think of like the one person that really it's really important. Um, for them to buy what you have, like what, what problem are you solving for them? So, you know, we've talked about moms, you know, there's really become this revolution in the last couple of years. Like you mentioned with COVID, like things have changed a lot as far as like what people want to ingest, what people want to feed their families. Um, and it's become so important. And so, you know, a lot of moms are the ones that are, you know, meal prepping and, and cooking, you know, and not to say that dads don't, they do too, but I think that it's, it's mostly on, on a lot of moms minds on like, where are they sourcing the foods that they're feeding their families? You know, are they running to the grocery store? If you go to the grocery store now, you really don't know what's in the meats that you're buying or in the produce that you're buying, you know, what's your apples covered in now, you know? So there's, yeah. There's really, it's become really a, a food revolution of people are really looking and more interested and paying more attention to what is actually in their food. So when you define that audience of, of people, um, then it becomes about like, how do you, how do you reach those people? How do you, um, how do you find those people, grow that audience and, and, you know, organize it into your own personal database. So once you have those core people, that group that you really, really, you know, those are your, your main buyers, your more main customers. Then you take those and you put it into a system like Facebook and you request it to find a lookalike audience. So lookalike is basically their AI is going to go in and, and search through all of those customer contacts that you have. And they're going to say, okay, well, these people look a lot like these people. And it's going to start pulling people out and making you another list that, has similar likes, interests, behaviors as as your core list. So in hand, you're us utilizing that AI to really go and and um, expand your list based on a or expand a, a new list based on the list that you're providing that AI. Yeah, that's 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 great. So to give you guys um, to kind of give my definition or to dive in a little bit of that, it's like once you have that customer list that role it can be that rolodex right that list that original list it, it'd be your original customers that have been buying from you for the last several years um, or even if it's your first year the first few customers that have bought for you at least minimum i think around 100 people 100 contacts um, but once we have that list 
putting that into Facebook and allowing it to find people that are similar, right? Have similar interest and then be able to market those people. Um, so like Amanda mentioned, we're, this is specifically for paid advertising, but the thing with paid advertising guys is we can scale. I think everyone kind of, um, here's paid advertising one, they're like, Oh, I got to spend more money. And two, they're like, I have no idea about it. Um, and so that's what, you know, we're, we're, we're attempting to do here now is give you guys a little of a foundation so you can understand how it works. But then also, you know, in the course, in the coaching program, we walk you guys through this step by steps so you can succeed and run profitable ads and have confidence in them. Um, but the big things that ads can do for you is allow you to scale on in, in automation, right? We can go to a farmer's market and we can do a little giveaway. We can give away some packs of ground beef and ask people to leave their emails for the giveaway. And we might walk away from the farmer's market with, you know, 25, 50, 100 emails. Um, and that's great. It's a huge, huge, huge win. But we did have to pack up and go to that farmer's market. We can run the ads from home, press the button. Again, it's that, that push button farm sales system is the system we teach inside the coaching program. Um, so that's kind of where the, where the name came from. But we can run those ads and we can get that in front of people that look like our existing customers and gain new customers kind of on autopilot, right? Um, so that's, that's what allows us to scale. Um, Amanda, if, you're, if, you're, if you feel good about the paid ad side of things, I'm going to kind of segment into um, some of the organic stuff. And I'll, and I'll do that in this, guys, is um, I'll give Mand, I'll give you a second to, to let me know if you're not done there, but I'll say this <laughs> as, as we look into transitioning is, you know, exhaust. I, I like to tell all of our clients to kind of exhaust a little bit of your warm network first, exhaust, um, your, your reach that you have organically without running the paid ads. And once you feel like you've done that, then we can step into paid ads and we can scale the operation. Yeah, no. So really, I mean, from, from what we just spoke on, like that foundation is, is your, your database, you know, you need that, that organic database, um, to really, like you said, scale. So the foundation of that is creating that original database. So we can dive into that. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, again, reference in reference to building that lookalike audience. So if you, if you're starting from scratch or you don't have a database, using the organic methods, um, the word of mouth methods, and some of the um, more bootstrap methods we're going to cover here in a second to build that audience so that you can build a lookalike audience to run some ads too. So great stuff. Um, we'll, we'll dive here into the free tactics that you guys can apply right away. That have been some really good wins for me and my farm. I think you guys will get a lot of value out of these. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to think of an order to go here. I know we got a lot to share. Um, you know, one let's kind of start, we'll start with word of mouth. Um, and then, then I'll want to move to like, I want to talk to you guys about collaborations, um, and even doing some giveaways. And then really what the idea of both collaborations and giveaways are is being able to tap into someone else's warm, warm network. Right. So in word of mouth, um, or thinking about our own warm network, we all have friends, family, um, you know, different acquaintances, people, or even people that we meet um, on a regular basis, that that's our warm network, right? And so we have a certain amount of people that we know that, you know, you know, follow us. It might just be your mom on Facebook liking your posts, but at least it's, it's somebody, right? And then we, there's other people we can tap into their warm network too. And we don't have to run paid ads to do that. We can, you were going to talk about some strategies to do that. But as far as the word of mouth, tapping into our audience, you know, obviously guys like super simple stuff, you know, posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram, letting people know know what you're doing. If you haven't done that already, um, I think that's pretty fundamental to like the very first things you're going to want to do whenever you do start your farm and you, you start doing that. Um, inside the course, what we actually teach and what we have a template for is what we call an opt-in page. And that's a page on your website where people can just go opt-in and they're opting into your email marketing. So it just has a space for them to fill in their name and their email to know more about things that are upcoming. So that's maybe to know about harvest dates that are coming up or to learn more about your farm. So if you guys just are starting your farm, if you haven't got it going yet, we can use the opt-in page to share that link, you know, on Facebook. Say, hey guys, we're getting ready to start a farm. We're going to have some whole and half beefs available next spring. If you guys want to know the dates, here's the link to opt in and we'll let you guys know. And so that you could share that organically just to your friends and family on Facebook or the people that follow you. And you might get several, you know, 10, 20, 30, you know, whatever that number looks like um, from your warm network, just from that one post. So that's, that's kind of like the first step, first start. Um, and then from there, you know, every time, you know, I like to say this, every time you meet someone, someone asks you guys what you do, um, you know, share with them about the farm, share with them what you got going on. Um, I know as farmers, sometimes we live in our own world and we don't want to talk to other people. 
Um, and I, I can totally relate to that, but it's important to do that. I think you'll get, you'll start to learn a lot of things that are really important. Um, you know, one is how to tell your farm story. You'll, you'll start to develop that report with people in the real world, um, to learn about what sticks with them. Um, and then the other really big one, I'm, I'm taking a little tangent here. Sorry, Amanda. Um, we'll hop right back into some, <laughs> some tactics here, but this, I wanted to, I had this in my notes. I wanted to, I wanted to make a point on this was when you have people come into your farm, whether that's a pickup or they've already got an order, or they're visiting, whatever, um, or even if you're dropping off a delivery with them, I think it's really, really important to talk to those customers. Don't just hand them their beef, say, thank you. Have a great day. See you later. Um, I think it's great to talk to them, ask them what they enjoy about your beef, um, ask them if they have any feedback about your products or your offerings, ask them, you know, hey, if, if, if we did something this way, you know, if we offered a box, a bundle that had X, Y, Z in it, would that be more appealing to you than, than the one we currently have, right? And by talking to people, you can start to learn the things that they are thinking or the feedback or what would be more convenient for them to order from you. So I think that's the easiest way to get feedback, you know, um, up front. And then that helps word of mouth that builds that connection with that customer. Um, I think that's a really great starting place guys is just your warm network of people that you are already connected with. Yeah. And, and, you know, like you said, the foundation of getting started with that, building that audience, um, you know, there's a lot more footwork involved with that, you know, like you said, um, you know, doing, you know, the farmer's market giveaways, things like that. Um, but they are really a great way to get started because word of mouth really is king. We've talked about that before, um, that you can't, you know, you can't even put a value on that because, you know, if you're at a farmer's market and, you know, you're giving away samples of, of whatever you have with you that day, you know, if, if they take that sample and, you know, they tell, you know, their mom, their dad, their sister, their brother about it, like those like, um, direct referrals, you know, if they, if they become a client and their best friend is like, you know, they come over for dinner and they're like, where'd you get this steak? And they're like, Oh, well, I only buy my steak from, you know, this ranch. Well, how do I buy it? Cause it's really good. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just really important, you know, um, and, and there is a little bit more footwork involved, but, um, we talked about already about like, once you've kind of grown that core, um, core customer database, um, then there's a lot more automated ways to, to continue that growth. Um, but, but putting in the footwork now is going to save you so much more time later, you know? That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, and you mentioned giveaways, so I'll, that'll segment me into kind of that next part there um, in the idea of giveaways and collaboration. So it doesn't always have to be giveaways um, in the course and in some of our free materials. We talked a lot about giveaways. Um, I mentioned the free materials, one of them being the pre-sold season. So I know upcoming guys, um, we're coming up to the start of 2024. Many of you guys are probably planning for your season, but this is the pre-sold season. You guys can get this for free currently in 2024 is, is we are going to start charging for it. Uh, but it's a it's a guide to you know giving you guys a blueprint to pre-selling your farm products um, through emails through all the things that we're talking about and we cover giveaways in that resource. Um, so if you guys have seen that read through that, that's what I was referencing. Um, the idea of doing giveaways, I think eyes kind of pop a lot of times when I say that because people are worried about giving away free product, um, but the or just free stuff in general. But the idea here is that we're investing into our business, right? We're giving something away for something in return. And what we're we're asking for in return is customer contact details to enter for a giveaway. So we're saying, hey, we're going to give away five packs of ground beef and some ribeyes or, you know, um, for my farm, we're currently doing a, a Christmas ham giveaway. Um, we've given away whole chickens. We've given away different things um, of that nature. But in, the idea, again, is that we're, we're doing that in return for customer contact contacts to register for the giveaway. So we're gaining customer contacts that have a value. Now they may have a future value as in, you know, we're looking for that value to pay us back over the course of the next two, three years as, you know, let's say we get a hundred customer contacts um, to enter for the holiday ham giveaway. We're looking at those hundred customer contacts for us to win, let's say 10 to 15% of them. That sounds really low, but if we look at that over the course of a two-year period and our average lifetime value of a customer, um, which is just a fancy word for um, how much a customer spends on average with you for the lifetime that they will know you as a farm. So if they're spending two, $300 with you every year for the next five years, that values could be in the thousands of dollars per customer. So the investment you're making in the initial giveaway is 
well worth it. Um, and I want to dive into some examples Amanda mentioned earlier about giveaways and collaborations that have worked really good for my farm. Um, you know, uh, Amanda mentioned about the specific um, dream customers or user demographics that we want to tap into. She talked about those moms. They're going to give us the biggest return on our time spent in marketing. Um, so we found some groups on Facebook uh, specifically just because, you know, Facebook groups are really strong guys. Um, there's other places that you can find uh, groups, but Facebook groups are really, really strong. Um, one being the hip holistic mama group. And then one being a North Georgia, I think it was the North Georgia homeschooling co-op group. And another one was the Weston A. Price North Georgia chapter. Um, the Weston A. Price one guys being um, a national conglomerate of, or a national chapter of Weston A. Price. And there's chapters all across the country. So that's a good one to check for you guys. The Hip Holistic Mamas group is one that's, you know, local to North Georgia. Um, and then the homeschooling co-op one also was local to North Georgia. But you guys can hop on, you know, Facebook and go in that search bar and just search, you know, homeschooling, you know, groups and then search your city. And I, I'm sure there's a homeschooling group um, in your city or your area or larger market that you serve. And that right there is a group of potential customers that are really, really uh, have a really high percentage of converting into a customer that would buy farm direct. As Ma Amanda mentioned earlier, you know, moms are the ones that are concerned with what they're eating. Right. Um, and so this is a group that has a high percentage of converting. So these are the groups where we want to go in and we want to reach out to the admins or the people that are managing that group and say, Hey guys, we've got some whole chickens, we've got some beef, whatever it is your farm produces and say, hey, we'd, we'd love to do a giveaway. We think your warm network. So again, I talked about our warm network. Now we're trying to tap into someone else's warm network would really benefit from winning or would like to win what we have to offer. Would you be willing to share it? Right. And so we did that with our farm with Hip Holistic Mamas group. We gave away two or three whole chickens and we were able to get 500 email contacts and actually sell out our whole first year of raising pastured poultry with that one Facebook group without doing the paid ads, without doing all those things. And obviously we've scaled from there, um, but it was a really good start for us. And you guys can do this at scale. You can do this with multiple groups um, and you can do, like I said, it doesn't have to just be a giveaway. It can be a collaboration. Maybe you guys host, host an event together. You host a dinner together. Um, sorry, I got the dog barking, intruder alert. Um, but we can do... We can do different things. Um, it could even be, you know, some type of, um, you know, fundraising event for specific groups or people. There's, there's a lot of different things. We can start to brainstorm some different ideas. But at the end of the day, we are doing this in return customer contact information. So just keep keep that thing kind of the main thing, the main thing, guys. Um, but those are some really good strategies for converting cold prospects that know, don't know anything about you into someone that's willing to give you their contact information to win something that you're giving away or that you're offering and you're collaborating about. So we can partner with other like local businesses. We can partner with other um, influencers. Maybe it's a um, local mommy influencer or something similar um, are really good ones or a foodie influencer or something like that are really, really good ones. Um, I will say this guys, and I'll let Amanda chime in here is be careful about what you're giving away. I, I had someone ask me the other day, or they were like, how do we control people that just aren't just signing up for free stuff? Right. Um, so I would say this, like, don't, don't, maybe don't give away bacon. Okay. If you're, if you're a pastured pork producer. And the reason I say that is because anyone's going to sign up for free bacon. Right. So you might get a, ton, <laughs> you might get a ton, everyone loves bacon. You might get a ton of signups for people to get free bacon, but they may not be your ideal customers. So um, for us as farm producers, um, you know, that are selling to people that are really looking for real food. I would say like my dream customer, I know this is going to be silly, but I think you guys will relate to this. My dream customer wants bone in thighs. They don't want boneless thighs. Okay. My dream <laughs> customer, my customers buy my chicken feet to make chicken stock with. Okay. So think crunchy granola person making their own chicken stock in their house. That's my dream customer. So if that's my dream customer, I don't want to give away boneless, skinless chicken breast because that's what everyone wants, right? Maybe I'm going to give something away that my, I, I want my, I want to attract my dream customer. So maybe I'm giving away a kit to make your own chicken stock, right? Or a sourdough kit, right? And I want, so I'm trying to attract the person that really wants that. If it's someone that doesn't really want that, they're not going to bother with applying for that. And then I'm kind of narrowing down the people that I'm attracting. That's that's who I want is my customers. Um, so that, be careful with that. It's kind of a little tip, but um, Amanda, I know you might have some things to share there. So I'll let you go yeah, for it. No, but guys, I think that's, 
that was good being strategic with that giveaway. You know, like you said, you don't want to just give away something that's generalized and doesn't really represent your product, you know? Um, so definitely think about being, you know, strategic with that. You know, you mentioned that, you know, being afraid of, of giving away too many product and, and we're not saying to that you want to do, you know, 10 giveaways a month. We're saying that, you know, you want to find the right group, um, and then, and do one or two giveaways. And, and like with your example, like you were able to find, you know, those one or two groups and you were able to sell out your first, you know, pre-sold season, um, which is just incredible. I mean, when you told me that I was mind, mind blown, you know, like, you know, I would, I would expect to have, you know, good success if you find the right group, but to sell out, like, you know, in your, in your first, first giveaway. I mean, that's incredible. Um, and, and we did have, you know, we had some experience with our latest one-on-one coaching client. Um, you know, we had Red Acre that went down to a two day event, um, and they did a giveaway. Um, I believe it was a port giveaway. Um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, they said over a course of two days, they were able to collect, do you remember? It was like, I thought he said like 300 emails. It was a lot. It was crazy. Yeah, I don't remember the final amount, but I remember it. Was it lot, yeah. You know, and, yeah. and just, you know, that example, you know, like you said, there's some footwork involved, packing up, you know, preparing, traveling, packing back up and coming back home. But, you know, in order to, you know, in order to really have success like that, you know, finding the right event, you mentioned, um, homeschooling, like we have homeschool co-ops here, you know, we, we do some homeschooling in our house. And so, you know, we have a big conference once a year. Um, and, and, you know, anyone can sign up to, to be a part of that event. So, um, that would be a really, really great, um, place to start, you know, at conferences like that, um, and kind of think outside of the box, you know, like you said, um, where are you going to find those ideal customers? You know, chiropractors is another really good one. You know, whole health chiropractors is a big thing in our area. Um, and, and a lot of them have, um, you know, strong, digital footprints themselves, you know, and, and can share, um, giveaways or collaborations or anything like that, or, or even, you know, just uh, again, word of mouth through clientele and things like that. So, um, those are really great places to start with, with that sort of database, um, collection. Yeah. Yeah. Those are some really good resources. I'll add CrossFit gyms to that. We, we partner some CrossFit gyms. Um, yeah, no, the, the chiropractors, we had some good success with that as well as like holistic dentists, um, and just holistic doctors in general that are, that are willing, um, I say holistic, there's, there's other doctors as well, but there's a lot of, um, doctors in the holistic, um, I don't want to say genre or niche that, uh, I think they really understand the benefits of eating pasture raised diets, eating farm fresh, and they're willing to, um, push those as, you know, food is medicine, you know, eating real food is medicine versus all the processed stuff that, you know, is in the American diet. So Amanda touched on something I, I, I want to kind of wrap up on. And then Amanda, I'll, I'll give you a chance for kind of final thoughts. I think we'll kind of wrap up here. Um, we kind of covered a lot of things we wanted. I know that we wanted to cover, but Amanda was like, Hey, you don't have to give away, you know, do 10 giveaways a month or 10 giveaways a year. Uh, I think something that's really important guys is you all have dreams, you all have goals um, and aspirations. And so something to know with the paid advertising and with the giveaways is that there's a number that you need. I tell a lot of my clients, I see it in a lot of different niches that a thousand email contacts can equal a hundred thousand dollars in farm sales. Um, and that's, that number obviously can change. You know, there's a lot of variables there. Um, number one being that those thousand email contacts are from people that are interested in your products in the first place. Um, and then obviously what, what it is you're selling and you know, what your, you know, the total value of what you sell. And there's a lot of variables, but I see it being pretty close for a lot of different, um, farming, direct to consumer sales, you know, niches inside of our farming community. Um, and the, and the big thing there guys is you've got to reach your number. If you want to, if you want to process 50 steers a year, you might need 2,500, 3,000 email contacts. You might be able to get those 3,000 email contacts, um, over the course of two, three years, you might be able to do some paid advertising and get them in nine, 12 months. Um, so you can do it faster with the paid advertising for sure. But at the end of the day, once you have that database and then you've got the word of mouth going for you, you don't need to keep doing giveaways. You don't keep, need to necessarily keep running paid advertising. You've got a database that you can sell your 50 steers a month to. Um, so whatever that looks like for you, those numbers might change a little bit. Um, but I think that I want to kind of leave you guys with that to kind of encourage you that there is a, there is a final place. Um, it's not that your job's done as a marketer and you can stop sending emails and you can stop doing all the things. 
but maybe you don't need to keep doing giveaways if you've got a customer list that every time you push the button, you sell out of your pork shares. Obviously, you don't need to keep doing you know, pork chop giveaways. Um, so I, I kind of leave you guys with that. Um, like I said, Amanda, I'll give you a chance to kind of put some final, final thoughts out there and then we'll kind of wrap up and look towards um, the future here. Yeah, no, I think that just the importance of that digital Rolodex, you know, um, you know, saving you time, saving you effort, you know, in the long run, once you have that database built um, to a comfortable place, and you know, that's going to look different for everybody. You know, you've got small homesteaders that might only need a few hundred emails, you know, you know, 500 to a thousand, whatever that looks like for their operation. Whereas like you said, you know, a ranch might need, you know, 2,500 to, you know, a few thousand. Um, so, you know, that's going to look different for everybody. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, our goal is to be able to utilize automation, use, utilize that, you know, that one push sale, um, to be able to pre-sale seasons, um, and, and really save you time and increase your profits in the long run. That's, you know, that's the whole goal. So. Great stuff. Yeah. All right, guys. So some actionable steps. If you're not already, make sure that you're keeping a list of your customers and you're building that list and preferably putting them into a software, into a CRM software. We walk all through all those steps and what softwares to use, how to use and manage those softwares, how to set up all the automatic email automations and all those things step-by-step in my course, the Direct Farm Roadmap and in the coaching program. So if you guys haven't checked those out, you'll see those in the show notes. I'd invite you guys to check both of those out. Um, you can set up a call with us. Calls are free. You can set up a call with me and Amanda directly. We can talk through your individual operation and see what best fit is for you or offer you guys you know, some more steps in taking some of the things we talked about today and putting them into action. Um, so I think that's it. I, I really enjoyed it, Amanda. It was great having you on. I look forward to um, future conversations. Me and too. Me too. It was great. Yeah. And, and to touch on to the course, you know, we've got a guide within the course too, that, that, um, gives you tips and tricks and walks you through on how, how, where to get started. Um, some free placements to make sure that your farm is listed at places that people can access your farm online. So we have a whole guide within the course on that as well. So. Yep. Awesome. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave with this guys. Um, this recording is taking place before we've launched this podcast. We're hoping to get this podcast now launched here in the next several days. So that will be before Christmas. And as we come into the new year, I'm sure we're going to be doing a special promotion for our coaching program for people that want to get started in 2024 with the coaching program. So I'll drop that. I'll do a separate recording for that. So you guys can hear that information right after this. So stay tuned for that. So you can catch on the details there. Look forward to helping you guys grow your farming operations. Thank you so much for joining the Direct Farm Marketing Podcast. And we are signing out.